have projects to submit in either pitch form, script form, or video form, or literary, uh, how do you get them to us? And how do we look at them? And what do we go through? And how does it work with our team? Uh, and we're going to go through all of that. If you have any questions throughout the course of this broadcast tonight, just go ahead and put them in the comments section here on Facebook or YouTube. I'll try to get to as many of them later on in the hour as I can. Um, but I am here in sunny, beautiful Duluth, Minnesota. That's uh, Lake Superior behind me. Uh, right over here is the downtown section where we actually hold the, the festival in the fall. If you've been here over the last few years, you know, that's a, a beautiful spot up here by the lake. Uh, and one of the first questions I always get is just why are we in Duluth for the festival event? Um, well, the answer is the Catalyst does uh, events or throughout the year. Uh, we're not just the festival. We're a full year-round institute. And these events take place uh, around the U.S., and we're going to start doing some international events soon. But the reason that the festival is in Duluth goes to the heart of the very first uh, thing that I want to talk about this evening, which is the difference between TV and narrative content festivals and film festivals. Uh, there are thousands of film festivals out there, and they're great. Uh, we know people who submit to local and regional festivals and international festivals like Sundance and Tribeca and Cannes and, and everything in between. Um, but the, the main difference that's going to drive everything that we're going to talk about tonight is that Catalyst is not a film festival, and that's really important. Uh, Catalyst is a TV and narrative content festival. And what the difference is, is when you make a film, you have a finished product that you are taking to the market, and a festival is a way to do that. People can watch your film, decide if they like the film, decide if they want to buy it, decide if they want to work with you on future projects. But they don't have to ask the question, oh, I wonder how this film or idea is going to turn out, because they can already see it. When you're talking about television and you're talking about narrative projects, you're not talking about projects that are done. You haven't probably, I'm guessing, gone out and shot 10 seasons or five seasons or even a full season of the show idea that you have. The idea that you have is at the beginning of its journey. It might be in many forms. It might be in a pitch deck form. It might be a script. It might be a video. Maybe you've shot a trailer. Maybe you've actually shot an episode or two. Uh, maybe you have shot uh, a full season. Um, but at its heart, your project is just at the very beginning of its journey. And our job at Catalyst is to put you in touch and get you connected to the right people that will help that project move forward. So you're actually at the beginning of a longer process. And that process is very relationship-based. So the reason that we chose a setting like Duluth, Minnesota for our annual festival is that it's a small town with a, a really fun vibe to it. It's an arts town right here on the lake. Um, if you are looking for locations to shoot your project, we've got a great film office here at the Upper Midwest Film Office that can help you go on location tours. And Duluth is really kind of just like a big back, back lot. It's a, it's a big production town. Um, but most importantly, it offers an environment during the festival that is just geared towards hanging out, being chill with some cool people that you meet, talking to folks, getting to know them, uh, and building and starting to build those relationships that will end up resulting hopefully in either mentorships or maybe even being able to uh, option and move along and sell your project. Uh, I'm going to get into the whole process about how do we work with mentors and how do you get yours and how do you get industry meetings and how do you sell your project? Uh, we're going to cover all of that uh, in this hour. But before we move forward, I just want to reiterate, reiterate that point that coming to Duluth and coming to the festival is important, whether or not your project is selected for the competition, uh, because the festival and the TV narrative business is really less about your project sometimes, and it's more about you. Uh, so if you're not here, there's no way that you can start building those relationships. Um, and the only other note I want to make before we really get started is throughout this entire conversation, we're going to be talking about submission fees and festival tickets and all of these things that we know and understand cost money. Um, if uh, finances are something that are a challenge for you to be able to submit or to be able to attend the festival, know that scholarships are available on our website. 
Uh, we have a number of tremendous donors who have given us money in order to use to, to cover things like submission fees and institute enrollment and whatnot. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind that scholarships are, are always available. All right, so let's get started here. Um, I wanna talk first about the process of building a career in TV versus film. Uh, in the film industry, your goal is to create projects and then have them sold. That way you can make enough money in order to pay your bills, create the next project and get this cycle going where you get to spend your days doing what you love, which is creating films and sharing them with the world. Uh, TV, the, the goal is the same is you want to be able to be creative and share your stories with the world. But the process is, is a little bit different. Um, and the heart of the difference goes to the fact that when you go to pitch somebody uh, an idea for your film, you're able to give them a pretty good idea of how much money your film's going to cost, how many pages long the script is, uh, how long it's going to take you to shoot, those kinds of things. When you're talking about your TV or your narrative project, you probably don't know the, the answers to most of those questions because you don't know if somebody picks up your, your show, you don't know if it's going to go for one season or five seasons. Uh, unless you've written something that is specifically a limited series that only has a set number of episodes, like four to six episodes, uh, you have no idea how long and how much money it's going to take to produce the whole series. Uh, and that's why we talk about the concept of TV is about building a story world and an entire universe in which your characters live. And that's really what you're pitching. And that's what you're showing at the festival is that you've built this world that could go on forever, could go in all kinds of different directions. Um, if your story is really just a singular story about one character who has a certain set of circumstances, there's a couple of plot twists involved, and then there's an ending to the story, chances are you haven't written a TV series. You've probably written a film. Uh, and that's important because the first thing that you want to make sure you're not doing is you want to make sure you're not wasting your time coming to a TV or narrative festival or institute trying to move forward a story idea that really isn't a series but is really more of a film. Uh, so that's kind of the first test you want to do with your story is, is it a story world that has characters and plots and, and that could kind of go on and that has a, a story engine that drives the series forever that other people could write the scripts for your shows. Because one of the things that's very unique about building a career in TV is that you don't usually write all of the scripts for your shows. You have a writer's room, you have showrunners, you have studio executives giving you notes. Creating TV is an extremely collaborative, collaborative process. And that's why Catalyst is relationship-based about building up your professional network. So when you come to Catalyst, it's good to have that sense in your mind that yes, of course, everybody wants to have the magical deal happen where you meet the person who is, loves your show and they walk it into a streaming network or a, a, a cable network tomorrow and you get the big deal and congratulations. Um, but that's extremely unlikely uh, unless you have a really good track record as being your own showrunner, having already sold stuff, all of these things that seem uh, sometimes kind of impossible to achieve. I'll go through all of that uh, later on about how we help you overcome those barriers uh, and build that professional network. Um, so let's talk about the, the festival itself. Uh, the festival is usually in the last week in September. Uh, this year it is September 28th through October 1st. And we're doing something really special, which is we are joining forces with some other uh, organizations and festivals from around the Minnesota region. Uh, one is the Duluth Superior Film Festival, and the other one is the Minnesota Web Fest. Uh, and the reason that we're doing that is, and I want to try to just uh, pull this up for you here. Um, this is the website of the 10 day event that we're doing called the North Star Story Summit. Uh, it's 10 days, it's three festivals, hundreds of stories. And as I was just mentioning, it's combined, uh, comprised of the Duluth Superior Film Festival, the Minnesota Web Fest, and then obviously Catalyst. Um, and the reason for this is we wanted to try to bring together the entire indie creative universe. Sometimes indie film people just go to indie film festivals. Same for web, 
and same for TV. And instead of asking people to come back to Duluth two or three times and have to fly in and out, um, we decided to join together and put it all into one 10 day event. So you can join for any of these. Uh, you can buy a pass for each individual one, or there's a pass for the whole thing. But we're really hoping to help bring together the independent creative community from around the world in all three, uh, all three disciplines this year. So that's some exciting news uh, that we're really, we're really happy about. And we're looking forward to seeing all of our film and, and web friends, along with our indie TV friends here in Duluth uh, at the end of September. Um, so when it comes to Catalyst itself, I want to start by talking about why you should attend the festival, even if you've not submitted a project, or maybe you submitted a project and it wasn't selected for the competition. Uh, here's what's really important to know about Catalyst. The festival awards competition is not the be all end all of what you're what you're trying to do. Winning an award at the festival is nice. It helps uh, differentiate you a little bit to other industry people because you can say, hey, I, I was in this competition against other really talented folks and my project happened to come out on top. Uh, but winning an award doesn't dictate who you meet, how you meet people, who's going to be interested in you or your show, uh, whether or not we work to help you meet people. Um, it, our process is, is year round. So you'll notice that our website is really built to reflect that fact, that the festival is just one event we do throughout the year. Uh, you can see our calendar here for other events that, that happen. And you can see that the topics range from retreats to how to make a show on any budget, how to bring your series idea to life, um, how the TV industry really works. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about the secrets behind the TV industry in a little bit. Um, and all of these events are meant to help you kind of fill in the pieces about the things in the process that uh, you, maybe you don't know yet. Uh, oftentimes, we find that people who come into the TV, indie TV world as being trained as um, film screenwriters, they think that the writer is in charge of the entire project. And in TV, like I mentioned earlier, that's just not the case. Um, so we have this institute program that goes throughout the year so that we can work with you in order to figure out who are you? Uh, what part of the journey are you on? What is it that is actually useful for you in the next step of the process? Um, of course, like I said earlier, everybody wants to have, uh, you know, pitch meetings all the time. They just want to go to NBC and ABC and HBO and CBS and, and Netflix and Hulu, and they just want to pitch their idea around town uh, until somebody buys it and gives you millions of dollars to go off and make it. In order to get to that point, you have to build those relationships. Um, and that's really what the Institute is meant to do. So I strongly encourage you, uh, even if you're not going to join the Institute and you're just going to come to the festival or just submit to the festival, take a look through the Institute page on the website and make sure you understand how Catalyst works um, and what kind of content we accept. So it's really important, I should say, uh, from the start before we get into this different submission categories, what makes Catalyst unique is we do not accept feature films. Uh, like I said earlier, there are thousands of film festivals out there. They're all great. The, the indie film world has a a kind of a set system and there's there's ways and festivals out there for you to submit to where you'll your film will be able to move forward uh, we do everything else so tv uh short form narrative episodic serialized content of any genre length style comedy drama thriller unscripted reality docs um, social media uh, influencer content um any really any length if if the format that your show and your story takes is episodic or narrative in format, we welcome it. Um, if for any reason you think you have a show that falls in between the lines and you're not sure exactly which category you should be submitting to, uh, just send us an email and our team will be happy uh, to respond. But one of the things I want to do right now is just start walking through what are uh, the different categories uh, that you can submit to. So let me just jump over to the content page. Um, oh, I see we've got some, uh, some questions starting to roll in here. 
uh, is the festival for the deadline tomorrow. Uh, the original festival for the deadline was June 25th. Um, we have gotten a lot of requests from people to extend it. So we have extended it to uh, July 2nd. So you'll see that updated uh, on our website, but you, you have an extra week uh, if you need it. Uh, there were just so many creators asking for an extension that we, uh, we caved and we, we uh, extended it for a week. Um, so let's head over to the submission page now. And on the submission page on our website, you'll have all the details. You'll notice I was just mentioning here the, the deadline extension. Um, to submit your project for the festival, it's a $65 fee or it's free if you're an Institute member. So one of the perks about being an Institute member is you get the free festival submission and you get a free industry badge to the festival, whether or not your show is selected, plus access to all of our industry events and everything else throughout the year. Um, but the big difference about submitting through either the Institute or the database versus just submitting uh, through Film Freeway for the festival directly is if you're an Institute member and you submit through the database, your project lives in our content database year round, not just the three months leading up to the festival as it does with uh, Film Freeway. And the reason that's important is we use that database and we send that database link out to industry executives and producers and mentors throughout the year who ask us, hey, I need a new writer for my, my writing room on this Netflix series I'm doing. Um, I'd really love to find a writer who has this type of background or this gender identity uh, or identifies in this way. And we give them the link to our database and they can go in and they can filter and search by, oh, you're a comedy writer, great. I'm looking for a comedy writer with uh, a female voice. Uh, and that database allows us to help establish those connections for you well after the festival has, has come and gone. Um, so don't feel the pressure to try to make all of your career happen in the four days of the festival. That's just not possible. Uh, you're not gonna be able to meet everybody who's there. And there's always this kind of FOMO fear at a festival of, oh my goodness, was I sitting in the right uh, location at the right time? Am I at the right panel? Did I meet the right people? Uh, you don't have to worry about that with Catalyst because we have this year round process for everybody that is an Institute member. Um, so those are the differences between submitting through uh, directly through the database uh, in the Institute or through Film Freeway. Um, one of the new things we're doing this year is we have opened up a literary category. So instead of only accepting uh, show ideas that are in pitch, script, or video format, we're taking literary submissions now. Uh, short stories, poems, um, books, uh, anything that is written but has not yet been turned into uh, a pitch deck, um, a written script, or a video yet, uh, feel free to submit those. So much intellectual property, so much IP uh, in the TV realm is being discovered uh, as literary works first. Uh, I just was hanging out with a couple of uh, writing and showrunner friends last week down in Minneapolis, and one of them just had a pile of books that she had found at her local bookstore about TV shows, uh, about um, stories that she wanted to turn into a TV show. And that whole process of how do you have your book optioned by a producer and turned into a script and developed for a network, that's all the kind of process we talk about and we go through with you uh, in the Institute. Um, so these are the different ways to submit your projects. Um, the different categories we have, you can see breakdowns of them here on our website. Obviously, uh, drama, comedy are scripted. Uh, same with thriller. Uh, documentary, uh, we have animation, reality, social media, kids content. Uh, podcasts are a fun way that people are putting their stories out into the world now. Uh, we get some really great podcast submissions every year, and we're noticing that some podcasts are starting to be considered and turned into TV series. Um, gaming, there's a lot of narrative content in the gaming world. Um, and those gaming writers and the way that it overlaps and the way that teens and younger generations are telling stories with each other through the gaming community is fascinating. So if you are involved in a project that overlaps gaming uh, uh, with TV and narrative content, we want to know about it. 
Um, and then there's the experiential categories, AR, VR, all these new technologies that are out there and new ways that people are telling stories. Uh, like I said before, if, if your idea is in a narrative episodic format, just send it to us, just pick a category. Um, even if you feel like it's kind of blurs the line between two or three, you only have to submit into one. Um, but it's important that we know the cool things that you're out there creating. Uh, the more that we uh, are told by you, the artists, what the, the formats are that you're telling your stories, the better we can help figure out where in the industry you connect and who you should be uh, connecting with. Uh, one of the other genres I want to point out, we didn't break it out specifically here uh, because it's kind of included a little bit in some of these, is sports. We're focusing heavily on sports category this year. So if you have a sports doc or some type of uh, scripted show, think like a Ted Lasso uh, or things like that, that are sports uh, in nature, we're really interested uh, in those too. Uh, but you can see more of these breakdowns on our website. Um, all right. So let's start going through the process here of what happens when you submit. So how and when to submit your project. Uh, the deadline, as I mentioned, has been extended to July 2nd. So you've got an extra week uh, to work on it. And in terms of how the process works, let me pull up this window here. So I'm just going to assume that you've decided to either join the Institute or submit directly through our database. Um, you don't have to join the Institute in order to submit through the database. That's really important. Uh, you can just go onto the database, make your profile and submit as many projects as you want. Uh, you can either do that directly through the database or through Film Freeway. Um, but know that you can just do a festival submission without the Institute. Um, so the first thing that you would do is you go in here and you create your, your profile. You only have to create your user profile once. It's just your basic info. Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, what do you do? Are you a writer, director, producer, et cetera? Uh, this is really important because this is the beginning of your journey with Catalyst that tells us, okay, you're, you identify primarily as a writer. So when it comes time to introduce you to people in the industry who can help advance your career, we should be introducing you to people who work with writers, not people who work with directors. Um, if you find yourself being a hybrid, as so many people do, you can pick a secondary creative title, and that'll give us a sense um, that you're a writer and a director or a director and a producer. Uh, but this is important. Put some thought into how you answer this question, because it will influence some of the decisions and the introductions that we try to facilitate for you later on in the process. Um, we use this uh, pro, your storyteller profile um, to get a sense of who are you, where are you from, uh, what are you looking for, uh, kind of where are you at. Uh, and that helps us partner you up because uh, that's really our end goal here is to figure out and find who are the people in the industry uh, that would be interested in, in you. Um, what's so fascinating about the TV development and pitch process is if you have a show and the concept of the show is something that a certain network is looking for and they decide they want to meet with you, it means that they probably already like your idea. And they've probably already considered that the genre and style of your show fits with their mandates. I'll talk about mandates in a bit. Um, and what they're really meeting with you for is to get to know you because the, the main difference between TV and film from a business model is a network who's investing or a studio who's investing in working with a new creator is investing a lot of money in your ability to produce something that you haven't produced yet. That's a big risk on their end. And I think creators really need to accept that and acknowledge that fact. Um, again, going back to the thing I mentioned at the beginning, when you're selling a film, the film's done. The person buying it doesn't have to wonder whether or not it's going to be any good. That's not the case with TV. So this notion that your pitch is entirely about how wonderful your characters are and the great plot twists that you have, that's only part of the game when it comes to TV. Who you are is really what, uh, what they look for the most. Um, so the first thing you do is you fill out this profile. And then the second thing you do after that is you can go back in and submit as many projects as you want 
and attach them to your profile. So in a way, it's a little bit like our own like Catalyst IMDB. You have one profile, and then you can attach all your projects to it. Um, as your projects change and develop over time, you can go back in and you can edit your project and update it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, I, I submitted the script uh, on the day before the deadline, and I've uh, had a brainstorm over the weekend, and I want to change it. Um, that's fine. You can do that. Now, what we ask is when you submit for the, uh, a project for the festival, you can do small little tweaks and changes over the course uh, of the selection process, but you can't like change the entire theme and you know story of the show. Um, so you can go in and just keep submitting as many projects as you want to the database. Uh, when you submit a project to the database, that does not mean you're submitting it for festival consideration. Why and, and why is that different? Well, because we want the database to be a repository where you can just keep all of your projects going so that you always, we always have a sense of the kind of things you're working on because TV is a little weird. And maybe there's a network exec out there who goes into the database one day and is searching for dramas. And let's say you're normally kind of a comedy writer, but you had decided one day to come up with this random dramatic idea and you put it in uh, into the database. And that's the one that the exec decides to pull out and focus on. Well, it was something that you weren't really ready to submit to the festival, but this person is interested in it. So that kind of weird, quirky magic can happen a lot. So it's important that you know you can put in as many projects to our database as you want without having to pay the submission fee. The submission fee for the festival only comes into play when you decide, oh, this project is ready to be submitted and considered for an award consideration. And you come back into the database and you click, yes, I'm ready to have this be submitted. Um, so I hope that clears up some of the confusion we've heard about. Well, does being in the database mean I have to submit for the festival? No. Use the database as kind of a, a tracker of all of your uh, projects you have going on in your career. Um, so one thing you're going to notice about submitting a project into our database is we ask a lot of questions. And we ask a lot of questions you probably don't get asked anywhere else. And at first, it can just seem annoying, but there's a reason for it. Um, and it's the reason that we decided to build our own proprietary database instead of just relying uh, exclusively on a third party system like the Film Freeway or others. And what all of these questions are aimed at is these are all questions that we get asked by agents and managers and executives uh, all the time. So if somebody is sees your project at the festival or searches the database and finds it, one of the first things that they want to know is, what's the legal status of your project? Do you own the rights to it? Um, are they going to be wasting their time talking with you because you have three other partners involved with your project and you guys all don't have contracts signed between yourself over who owns the rights? And what happens if you get an offer? Uh, we had a situation years ago at the festival where one of the, the top shows got an offer from a streaming company and the four co-creators um, hadn't put in agreement in place before they came to the festival and before they submitted the project. They couldn't agree on how the deal should move forward and it fell apart and never happened. Um, so we ask all of these questions in here with a purpose. Um, and it's okay not to know the answer to them all. Uh, as you'll notice here, some of the, the answers are, I have no idea what this question means. Uh, and that's okay because that will at least tell us that if somebody comes into our database, finds your project and is interested in it, and you say, I have no idea what chain of title means, we can work with you on that before we go ahead and connect you with that executive so that you don't end up embarrassed in front of them or looking like you aren't ready for that meeting. Remember, we're here to help you. We're here to protect you. We're here to make sure that your career moves forward as quickly as possible and in the best way possible. And sometimes that means we're just gonna have to help you fill in some information gaps and some knowledge gaps about the process. Um, it's why, again, it's why we ask all these questions about your history, um, the project history. And one of the big ones is, are you open to your project being redeveloped? All the time we have creators who come to Catalyst and they have a singular set idea for their show and it's the only version of the show that they're ever going to allow to be created. That's fine. That's your choice. Um, but it's also very limiting. The development process is part of television. And the way that development works is somebody finds your, you and your idea. They, they like it. 
they ask us to meet with you. We set up the meeting and then let's say they decide to move forward and option your show. The first thing they're going to do is put you into a writer's room environment where you're going to redevelop the project anyway. Why? It, it really, it's the buyer's prerogative. Maybe they, they have a certain audience that they want their network to hit and your show would be perfect for it. It just needs a few tweaks. Um, or they have some really great writers and producers that they already work with and uh, they bring their own showrunner in and they want that professional showrunner to help you redevelop the script so that it is uh, a lower budget or a higher budget or a better location or you know all kinds of reasons uh, can happen. That Sometimes you hear about development hell uh, and that's basically what it is. So we need to know in advance, again, are you open to even having the conversation about having your script redeveloped? Uh, before we put you into a meeting with somebody who may ask you to do that. Um, so you kind of get the sense of what I'm going at here with all of these questions. They're important and you should answer all of them because they're the things that we get asked. Um, and then after you finish answering all the questions, you can go ahead and say that, yes, you want to submit this uh, for, the, for the festival uh, or not. So that is a, an overview of the submission process. Um, let's take a pause here and look at a couple of questions. Uh, hey, will the judges be reading the entire manuscript of a novel? My friend has a fabulous fantasy novel she wants to submit. Great question. The judging process for novels, pitches, scripts, and videos actually goes through multiple rounds. Um, not every judge is going to read or watch every word of every or every second of every submission, um, but some will. So for the pitch, script, and video competitions, um, we kind of do it in a tiered approach. There is a first round, there's a second round, and then after that, uh, some of our industry friends come in and do uh, what's called jurying at the end, which is how the awards are selected. Um, for the literary process, the, the short answer is going to be yes, somebody somewhere along the way is going to read it, all, unless it's some type of 500 page epic or whatever you have. But as long as it's probably under, under a couple of 100 pages, somebody will probably read it all. Um, let's see. Best case scenario, what if you submit multiple pitches and more than one is selected? Is there a chance that there's a scheduling conflict? Great question. No, the answer is no. Um, our team has gotten really good at looking for all of those potential conflicts. And more importantly, here's kind of the the key secret to the, the festival and the awards process. The, the awards are selected before the festival happens. When you come to the festival to pitch or to have your table read or show your video, um, it's not being judged live, right? Uh, our, a lot of our judges are people who maybe they're busy because they're working on an NBC show right now and they're reading your pitch deck from Los Angeles. They're not even at the festival, but they do that weeks in advance. Um, so you don't have to put all the pressure on yourself about, oh my goodness, my presence, uh, my presentation at the festival is the be all end all of, of what happens with the show. Um, and especially with pitches, there are gonna be numerous opportunities throughout the year for Institute members to have their pitch uh, heard and seen by multiple uh, executives and, and potential mentors. So, uh, but we will make sure that at the festival, if you have multiple content uh, happening, you, you'll never have to be in two places at once. Um, can the media of a submission change? If you submit a script and then have time to shoot and edit before the festival, can it still be added to your submission? Uh, short answer, yes. The caveat is, uh, if you've submitted a script, it's just going to be judged by, for the script competition, it's just going to be judged by the script. It's not going to be judged by the script and the video. Um, if you decide a few weeks later to go out and shoot uh, the, uh, the video version of that, you can go ahead and add that in. Um, if our judges are still in the judging mode, we will attach that for consideration for this year. If the video category has already been decided and then you submit your video, that video will then go into the process for the next year, which leads you to ask the question, well, what's the cutoff date? It's nebulous and it depends on how many submissions we get, how long it takes the judges to go through the process. Uh, typically, we end up getting through the, the judging process by the end of July, 
but it really depends on the quantity and the types of projects that are submitted, uh, which is why we set our original submission deadline to be the end of June or early July so that we give our judges uh, some time to go through everything. All right, great questions. Keep them coming um, as I uh, go through the, the rest of the details here. Um, so should you submit your project as a pitch, a script, a video, or just a pitch and script, or all combination or all three of them? Uh, the answer is whatever you feel is uh, is ready. Um, it, you can absolutely submit the same project in, in all three ways. Uh, and it's interesting. Sometimes we've had people who have submitted a project in all three ways and the pitch gets selected, but the script and video don't or vice versa. Why is that? The video competition is extremely selective and it's based highly on the production quality of the finished video. If you feel like you have a great show idea, but you weren't able to produce a video version that really meets your, your, your quality standards, don't submit it as a video. Submit it as the pitch and the script. That's why those two competitions are there. Same thing the other way around. Let's say you're a writer and your goal is to be a writer. Well, there's no reason for you to go out and raise a bunch of money and learn how to be a producer and shoot your video if you just want to show that you're a fabulous writer. So in that case, just submit the script. Uh, so the answer is kind of really focus in on uh, on where you are and what you want to be doing um, with your project. Um, all right, another question just came in. Is there access to past winning pitches and scripts? There are, on our website, you will find the st stories and shows page where you can see trailers of past projects to give you a sense of the video quality. Um, you'll see descriptions of the scripts and you'll see descriptions of the pitches. Uh, for legal reasons, we don't we don't share the full pitch decks and scripts of uh, of past projects. Um, all right, moving on here. Let's talk about the end game that all creators want to know, which is how do I get an industry mentor? How do I sell my show? Uh, what's the pathway to that? And what's that look like? What's the timeline? And how does the festival play into that? Um, so here's our process: is we take in creators from anywhere that we can find uh, and they come in to our institute. The very first thing that our team does is they meet with you and they ask you, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you a storyteller? Um, are you looking to build a career? Are you just looking to sell this one show? Well, e either way is fine. Um, but where, where are you at it? And really what's the next point uh, and the next step in your process. So once you become an Institute member, you get to see the, hold on, let me find it here. Here we go. Um, this is the path, the page that outlines the pathway uh, for our Institute members. So you make your profile, you have your general meeting with our team. You start watching the hours and hours and hours of seminars uh, that we've built up, a great library of seminars that goes through the entire TV development process. Uh, you go through pitch seminars, you do group pitches with other creatives to get a sense of what does it mean to have to do a 30 second pitch, a five minute pitch, what should be in your pitch deck uh, and whatnot. Um, right. We have writing seminars so that you can get notes and do table reads at the festival and so on and so forth um, through the production process and everything. And the reason for all of this is to get you ready to request a meeting. Um, so what our team does behind the scenes throughout the year is we meet with groups of cre uh, tons and tons of creators, and then we meet with people in the industry, and we're trying to figure out what's the best matches here. Um, and that's a difficult process. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time, and it typically could take anywhere from six to 10 months between the time you first get started in the institute process and we find the right person for you to meet with. Uh, the worst thing that we could do is just set up random meetings with you because one of our executive friends happens to work at Netflix right now and everybody wants their show to be on Netflix. So you should just take a general meeting with this Netflix person. Uh, if they're not interested in the type of content that you're, that you're making, um, that's just a waste of both of your time. Uh, or even worse, if you're not ready, and I know that can be hard for creatives to hear, but really, if you aren't ready and you don't know the TV process, 
uh, it could be a disaster for you to be meeting with industry people before you have the ability to talk about how the process is going to work and know what the goals are going to be uh, and know how the sales process goes and know how what it means to be optioned versus a green light versus a series pickup and all these things. Um, and if you're wondering, how do we know the types of content that different executives and producers are looking for? There's a list out there. It's called the mandates. It's not public. It's private. Uh, usually only agencies, managing, management companies and festivals have it. And we have access to it. And it just tells us what everybody is looking for and who works at which studios and whatnot. Uh, and that's how we figure out where you should be going. Um, so that's why the process takes a while. Uh, and it's, it's very individual. And it goes back to the heart of the thing I talked about at the beginning of the hour, which is TV is about beginning your story's journey, not about the sale, right? Um, and so to really kind of close it off here, I just want to fill you in on a couple of behind the scenes process uh, processes that we use. Um, I just alluded to the mandates uh, again, which is a, a list of what networks and, and studios are looking for. Um, but there's also a thing out there called pods and pods are interesting. Pods are really the way that we help creators advance their career the most. Um, so every year we have multiple festivals at the panel, I'm sorry, multiple panels at the festival, workshops and whatnot, and we'll have industry guests come in. And uh, let's say that one of the industry guests is a production executive at ABC. Well, some creators will just open up the program, look at the list and go, oh, ABC, I know ABC, I want my show to be on ABC. Here's a production executive. I'm going to go to that panel and I'm going to meet that person and I'm going to pitch them my show. Um, well, the first thing is executives don't take random pitches uh, uh, out at, at festivals or at bars or wherever you meet them um, unless they ask for it. Probably not a good idea just for legal reasons. Uh, but secondly, you would never want to pitch your show to a production executive because the production executive is not in charge of which shows ABC is choosing to produce. The production executive is in charge of producing the shows that the development department and the literary departments have already decided are going to be produced. So even within the TV structure, there are all these nuances that are really important. Uh, another great example, every year we'll have agents or managers who are at the festival and somebody will just go open up the program and go, oh, there's an agent from ISA, from, from UTA who's, who's doing a panel. Um, well, they go and they meet that person and they start talking to them. And it turns out that that person is a literary manager. Well, the person who's decided that they want to talk to them is an actor. Literary managers don't rep actors. Uh, so knowing all of these things is really important and it will help you navigate through the festival environment and through um, all of your meetings. It's why we have the Institute and then what's why it's important to go through that whole process. Um, so the pods is a, another uh, list. Uh, that we use behind the scenes in the industry. And what that does is it's a list of all of the producers and writers and directors who have overall or first look deals at each of the studios. So we know uh, if a producer is working for uh, Disney or Century Fox or Century, whoever it is. Um, and because we know the mandates for what those networks are looking for, we can start building those relationships. And that's just part of the secret sauce uh, that we use. So it's good for you to know that there's a lot more going on to the catalyst process than just, hey, I submitted my project to the festival, it got accepted to the festival, and I won an award. Um, those three things are great. They are just the beginning of your career and your story development process. Um, and that's really the last thing I want to talk about, which is the awards and, and festivals itself. Uh, there are a lot of organizations and websites out there now who are starting to do things like offer up quarter finalists uh, for script competitions or semi-final scripts. And they, they walk you through this whole process and they take in all these script submissions or they'll rate your script. They'll give you a, an eight out of 10 or a nine out of 10. Um, Unless there is some type of human element attached to those organizations, like a potential mentorship, like the one-on-one -on -one meetings at the Institute, like the festival event where you get to actually talk to people, chances are that those kinds of competitions aren't really going to do too much. Yeah, the miracle happens every now and then, 
uh, where some executive will go in and say, oh, I just want to read all the 10 out of 10 scripts. And they, they end up reading three and they pick one. Um, but that might work well for film. It doesn't really work too well for TV. Um, so I just want to kind of set kind of a brutal honesty uh, truth about, about that process. Same goes for festival awards. Uh, just because you win a festival award doesn't mean you're guaranteed to sell your show. Uh, we've had a number of shows who were uh, eligible uh, for the festival, who were selected, uh, but didn't win an award. And they were the ones who ended up getting meetings and moving forward just because they happened to, uh, you know, go through the Institute process and meet the person who, who, who likes them in their show. Um, we've had shows submitted to us that weren't even selected for the festival that have ended up resulting in people getting meetings that ended up getting them jobs and advancing their careers forward uh, to pretty high levels, to people being showrunners assistants who started off with projects that weren't even festival selected. So again, I, I emphasize everywhere I go to all creators I meet, TV is about building your career. It's about building your networks. It's about building the relationships. And the festival is just one really fun, cool way to do it. Uh, but don't put all your pressure on yourself about being selected or, or winning awards. Um, so that is uh, pretty much it. I hope to see all of you here in Duluth soon. Uh, it's been a beautiful, beautiful year here. We've had a lot of productions happening. Uh, if you've been keeping up on our socials and Facebook pages and newsletters, you've been seeing and hearing about all the films and TV pilots that are being shot here. Uh, a lot of those uh, have been a result of producers that came to the festival and then ended up uh, meeting the film office and meeting the local crews and all the local talent here uh, and producing their projects and getting the incentives and rebates. And if you haven't looked at all the production rebates and incentives, uh, check it out on our website or go over to Upper Midwest uh, Film TV uh, and they will uh, help you through that process. So I'm going to hang out here for about another uh, minute or two to see if any last minute questions roam in. Um, but let's see what we got here. Um, looks like I have covered everything oh, all right we got one more that comes in nope that's it all right well thanks everybody uh, it's good to see you virtually hope to see you all in person soon keep an eye out for events coming up in New York, Chicago, LA, and uh, elsewhere around Minnesota soon. Um, and we will see you in Duluth. Have a good day.